What is up, players? It's Warboss Tab in this mug. I decided to do something a little bit different, and that is dive into the character creation for one of Fantasy Flight's 40k role-playing games, in this case, Death Watch. And I wanted to uh, create a Death Watch Marine, kind of do it live. I don't have a... Uh, I thought the easiest way to do it would be to use a random number generator instead of rolling dice that you guys can't see. So, um, let's just get to it. So when creating a Death Watch Marine, the first thing you want to do is generate the characteristics. So you've got your weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, agility, intelligence, perception, willpower, and fellowship. Each of those kind of correspond to a different facet of your character. And uh, so what we do is we roll 2d10 for each characteristic at 30, and then you get to re-roll any one characteristic. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're going with a minimum of 2 and a maximum of 20 because when you roll two 10-sided dice, the lowest numbers you can get are 1s. There's no zeros, so the lowest score I could get would be a 2. The highest, if I rolled 10s on both dice, would be 20. So um, right now, if you uh, notice I'm uploading a video in the background, hopefully that doesn't mess me up too much. So let's get the that there and a random number generator. Here we go. Okay, so weapon skill generate nine. So weapon skill is how well you are in close combat using uh, melee weapons. Okay, then moving on, we're gonna go to ballistic skill. 20, that is awesome, that is the best we could have hoped for. So plus 30 is 50. So we have a character here who's very, very good at shooting. We've got three, oh, not very strong. I'm probably gonna wanna reroll that one. Okay, moving on to toughness. 10, eh, pretty, pretty average, right? So, oh not, I'm sorry. Why well, didn't, 30. So yeah, that's that's right. So thirty plus ten is forty. Most um, fantasy flight games, when you're creating your character, if you're a regular human, you add twenty. I keep forgetting that these are space marines, so you add thirty. So thirty plus fourteen is forty-four. Pretty agile. Now let's see how smart this Death Watch marine is. 12, so 42. Perception, 14, so 44. Willpower, 10, so 40. And fellowship, 19, so 49. So I definitely want to reroll the strength, so let's get rid of that. 33, and let's do it one more time. 16, much better. So, 46. Alright, so let's take a look at our character now. Weapon skill is pretty... pretty... Uh, middle of the ground. <coughs> Ballistic skill is just about as perfect as you could get on rolling characteristics. Strength, 46. Toughness, 40. Agility, 44. Everything else is kind of in the, in the middle. The upper scores are definitely ballistic skill, strength is pretty above average, and fellowship. So we've got someone here who is going to excel more in the shooting. And uh, in Death Watch, the Marines in Death Watch are chosen to join the Death Watch, which is a whole a separate entity to the Space Marines. Uh, the Death Watch is a branch of the Inquisition, the Holy Inquisition that takes Space Marines from just about every different chapter you can imagine and takes them when they've done something worthy of renown and uh, they put them into specialized squads called kill teams and force them to work with each other even though they're all from different chapters. It's an interesting concept and it, um, it, it just made me want to do it. So here we go. Next we're going to choose chapter. What I've decided to do is take the chapters that are described in detail in all of the source books, the rule book, the core rule book, as well as two of the supplements, which added the Imperial Fists and more of the original founding chapters. And 
Yeah, I think the only not first founding chapter here is the Black Templars. They're a second, second founding chapter, but I decided to throw them in anyway. So what I'm going to do is we'll put from 1 to 10. <clears throat> and let's see what chapter our Space Marine is from. 6. So 6 is the Raven Guard. Alright, so we're already starting to get a kind of good idea about what kind of marine, marine we are developing here. So next we're going to select our specialty. These are the six that are in the core rulebook. You've got some other ones in different uh, from different source books, but I've decided that we're just going to use the core rulebook since we uh, the guy that we we got was a raven guard, and uh, these are the other specializations for these other other chapters. So we're going to put in one through six, and we are just making a character totally, completely at random here. Four. Librarian. Ooh. That's his willpower. Okay, so we've got a librarian. A Raven Guard librarian who is good, a, a terrific shot. And yeah, I, I think he can do okay. His willpower is kind of in the middle of the road. Librarians use psychic powers, and willpower is your big determining factor in that. So he's kind of middle of the road here at the moment. But you know what? Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Movement, wounds, fate, experience. So to determine how many wounds or hit points he has, we roll a d5. So that's 1 to 5. And we add it to 18. Ah, 1. So... Yeah, so that's that's pretty that's pretty crummy. Nineteen. Nineteen wounds. That's something we'll probably wanna wanna improve upon. Fate points. In the role-playing games for most of Warhammer Fantasy and 40k, the fate points represent uh, little bits of luck, good luck that happen to your character and they affect roles. They can, uh, when you're rolling your dice and doing stuff, you can also burn them because they recharge at the end of every game session. But if you want, you can burn them permanently, lower your fate point score to save your character from certain death. And that's basically saying that the Emperor is watching over these Space Marines and they've been marked for something terrific. So we'll roll between a 1 and a 10. And 9. So that's pretty good. A 9 on this score is 4 fate points. So we'll put four here. All right. And now let's take a look at what our Raven Guard librarian gets. He's got his suit of power armor, his bolt pistol, three frag grenades, three crack grenades, his combat knife, repair cement, uh, one chapter trapping. And in addition, he's got specific specialties equipment. So. I decided not to write all these down, but we'll, I'm, I'm consulting the book right here, and we'll say besides all of his equipment, all as normal, in addition, our librarian is going to get the following, the Stardis Bolter, with fire selection, and a force weapon. All right, so next let's give our character some life. I'm going by, uh, I'm on page 29 of the Death Watch core rule book, and it says, oh bummer, there's, um, there's this terrific past uh, events that happened to that happened to the characters, and uh, it's kind of kind of tells the story of how they got to be where they are and why they are the way they are. But um, the one I was looking at was for the core rule book, and what we want to look at is the one for the supplement because I think Raven Guard were releasing the supplement, which is called First Founding, Death Watch First Founding. So while we flip to that. I'm, my brain is already starting to um, churn and 
develop a, a character history for this, this space marine that we've invented here. So uh, as you can see, one of my favorite things about starting new role-playing games is creating the characters and taking a look at what they have, what, what's good about them, ballistic skill, what's not so good about them, and uh, trying to develop and create a life for these characters. I think it's one of the most interesting things about it. An another interesting thing that I noticed is that our, our librarian here is very friendly. His fellowship is 49, which is like really friendly. And usually librarians are not that friendly. So, you know, trying to think of what kind of character we've got here. Uh, his fellowship is is very, very high. His ballistic skill is very high. Um, he's kind of middle of, middle of the road, just about everything else, but uh, yeah, usually Raven Guard especially, they're not known to be the most friendliest of chaps. Uh, most people, most Space Marines aren't granted very friendly. So uh, this is another interesting character trait that we can kind of note for our character when we're when we're playing this guy, uh, we can say that his, um, you know, he's very friendly. He's a, a good shot, maybe, but he maybe he doesn't like to to um, to let people know, because Raven Guard are also very kind of secretive. They're not boastful or arrogant, and uh, let's say that he's a really really good shot, even more so than most other Space Marines, but um, he tries to keep that as like a trump card that he doesn't really uh, reveal. Instead, he likes to use his mind. So he's got a kind of middle-of-the-road intelligence and willpower. And so he's developed these psychic powers, and he's uh, constantly trying to challenge himself to get better because he's n he knows he's not that powerful of a librarian. So um, de de depending on when this uh, digital... PDF of my first founding book opens, depending on what specifically his background is, uh, that's a very interesting point that we could make. Because all of these Space Marines, they had to have done something really, really good to get into the Death Watch. They had to really distinguish themselves in some way. Uh, most Space Marines, they distinguish themselves through long service and through dedication in their chapter. And um, they, they say that out of every hundred humans, you might have one human that's fit to be in the Death Watch. Out of every 100, or that's fit to be a Space Marine. So out of every 100 humans, you get one guy that's good enough to be a Space Marine. Just a regular run-of-the-mill Space Marine. And they're not really run-of-the-mill anyway. They're really, really, you know, powerful and strong. But maybe out of 100 guys, you've got one good enough to make it as a Space Marine. Out of 100 Space Marines, you maybe have one who's good enough to be in the Death Watch. So they've had to really distinguish themselves in their chapters. They have already got to be really renowned, popular. These aren't the, you know, fresh out of scout training guys. And so um, we're going to hopefully develop these characters. All right, here we go. I've, I've pulled it up. So Raven Guard. Uh, Raven Guard characters. We're taking a look at their pasts. So, Raven Guard Pass. What we're going to do is we're going to roll between a 1 and a 6. And the result is 6. So his past, this character's past is Oh, uh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. It should be a 1 and a 5. The table is 1-6, but his past is 2. Operation Kronos. You were part of the Raven Guard troops deployed during Operation Kronos. You watched in horror as your battle brothers were dominated by the nightmarish enslavers, turned into mindless zombies bending to their will. You hold a bitter grudge against the White Scars chapter, who had an opportunity to act and save your brothers, but did nothing. Okay, right on. So there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of backstory. He's a survivor. And he lost uh, most of his friends during this um, operation, and yeah, so so he, and and he's got a bitter en enmity uh, against the White Scars chapter, which were supposed to be there to save him, but they didn't. All right, so we're gonna choose this guy's name now. 
3, I'm looking at the Raven Guard name table. Oh, it's out of 10. Oops. 1 and 10. 8. Okay, so his name is Yiraka. Y I R A K A. Yiraka. Alright, and is there anything else we have to take note? He's got a solo ability, Master of the Shadows. So, the Raven Guard excel at covert operations, opting for the more subtle approach over an all-out assault. Millennia of training and refining their guerrilla tactics have made them masters of blending into the shadows and striking when their opponent least expects it. When the Battle Brother is in solo mode, he may reroll any failed concealment, shadowing, and silent move tests. Okay, so in, in the Death Watch game, you have these abilities, solo mode abilities, depending on which chapter you're from. Because he's a Raven Guard, and Raven Guard excel at, at concealment and hiding and all that stuff, that's what his solo mode ability is. He's also got squad mode abilities, which we're not going to go into, but... Um, Alright, there is a special section for Raven Guard's psychic powers, and we'll take, a mo uh, take note of that. The special psychic powers are Korax's Ingenuity, Curse of the Raven, and the Unkindness of Deliverance. Very cool. They also have chapter trappings as well, so it looks like we get one chapter trapping. Okay, so uh, he, he's a librarian. We haven't decided what psychic powers he's going to have yet, so we won't write down what his psychic abilities are, but we will take a look at the chapter trappings. So um, the first is Sable Heraldry. The shadows have always been the greatest allies of the Raven Guard, from their brooding demeanor and pale complexion to their stealth tactics and guerrilla warfare. Uh, this inclination is greatly reflected in their jet black armor and symbols of the black bird that is their namesake. So let's take a look at which chapter trapping we want to give our guy here. He's got the Raven Claw, commonly placed on the right shoulder of veteran Raven Guard battle brothers, the Black Raven Claw is painted upon a white shoulder pad and is reserved for those with long and venerated service to their chapter. Then this gives a bonus to perception because they're practiced in the art of guerrilla warfare, so they react more fluidly to changes on the battlefield and they're constantly aware of their surroundings. So if we choose that as our chapter trapping, our perception bumps up from 44 to 47. There's also the Raven Calvaria. Taking the form of the bird's skull, the Calvaria is a direct decoration worn by many battle brothers across the chapter. It is commonly worn hanging from a chain around the space marine's neck or strung from the right shoulder pad. This adds plus two to agility. Also, we could decide to get the helmet picter. The Raven Guard take an incredibly thorough approach to battle, planning out every angle prior to the engagement and analyzing every maneuver afterwards. They use data recorded during battle, compiled by the chapter's warriors, to hold post-action sermons to analyze the performance of the chapter, helping improve their effectiveness in combat. Raven Guard Battle Brothers serving in the Death Watch often try to maintain this tradition during their secondment. Using a helmet-mounted camera picter, they can personally review the events of the mission and better prepare themselves and the rest of the kill team for future engagements. At the end of each mission, the Battle Brother may take a challenging tactics test, which is basically a, a, a dice roll, Every member of the kill team gains an additional 50 experience points per degree of success. That is awesome. Uh, unfortunately, for the uh, purposes of our uh, this little experiment that I'm doing, Yuraka does not need that because uh, he's not. We're, we're not going to be with him for too long. So the. Um, the more interesting things would be the Raven Claw or the Raven Calvaria. But what we'll do is we'll put it in a 1 out of 3 and we'll let the fates decide. 1, which is the Raven Claw. So that again is adding 3 to our perception. So I'll just bump this up to 47. Oosh. And so we've got a Raven Claw Librarian. Now, along with all of these, we've got the, um, our character is going to have skills and, and talents, which I'm going to try and choose on my own to supplement what he already has, as well as advancements. At the beginning of each game, your character will have already accrued 
a lot of experience because they're they are veteran space marines. So they have 12k, 12,000 already. And then at the beginning of the adventure to spend, they have plus 1,000. So you can spend 1,000 experience points at the beginning of the adventure on any free advance. 12,000 just means that that's their current, um, their current level of experience from the beginning of their career as a Space Marine to now. They have acquired 12,000 experience points to get everything that they have to get up to here. And then we've got 1,000 at the beginning that we can use to spend on stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the core rule book and the uh, supplements and try to see if I can figure out what I want to spend these points on to make Yuraka a little bit more ready for, for what he's going to be doing. The Death Watch, as you can see, is a fun game to kind of create character stories and histories. And I'm going at it with a completely open mind. What I want to do is develop a kill team here that is going to um, kind of hopefully be thrown together and work together. And this is just for me to keep my creative juices flowing. And uh, I hope you guys will join me. So stay tuned for part two of this video where we look at Yuraka ready for battle. And uh, I will show you what advancements I've chosen, what skills and talents he's going to have, and uh, everything that we need to get him started. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one, and I'll see you then. Laters!